Okay, this is a continuation of section 1.6 for Mac 1105. We were talking about solving radical equations and we were working on this first example in the last video. <clears throat> we had gotten to the point where we had brought the three over to the other side because you need to isolate the radical expression before squaring each side. We had put a square on each of these expressions because when you bring the three over to the other side, you then have X minus three. So that entire expression needed to be squared as well as the radical. The, on the radical side, it's easy. You just square it and the square root comes off and out comes the radicand. But on this side, which is what challenges students only because maybe they're not as good as they need to be with foiling. This means foiling, and some students don't even recognize that, that this means x minus 3 times x minus 3. And if you were going to foil that the long way, you'd have to go x times x. You'd have to go x times negative 3. It's a four-step process. You'd have to go inner times inner and last times last. That's if you're doing it the long way. There does happen to be a shortcut for squaring a binomial, and that is square double square. I was demonstrating that but ran out of time in the last video. When you use the square double square as I've demonstrated in previous sections, the first square means square the front term. That's where the x squared came from. The doubling, when you're doubling, this is what you're doing first before you double. You're just multiplying this negative 3 times the x. You're multiplying those th two things together then you're doubling that coefficient, which doesn't affect the sign. So negative 3 times x gives you negative 3x, but then you're doubling the coefficients. That's what the doubling part means. That's doubling. And then when you see square again, that means square the back term. So negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, so next you would notice that you have a second degree equation. You're trying to solve it. So you want to bring all terms to one side so that you can then decide, hey, am I going to factor this or am I going to use the quadratic formula to get to the final solutions? <clears throat> Again, there are other methods. Those are probably the two most popular. So if you bring all the terms to one side, that positive x would become negative x. That's like subtracting x from both sides. And the 3 would come over and be a negative 3. So then you'd have 0 is equal to x squared. These two combined would be negative 7x. And then 9 take away 3 would be positive 6. You can try factoring that. I believe the numbers will work out. I'm going to come up here with that equation to give me some more room. And if you're using guess and check, you would be breaking up the front term in the front position of each parenthesis, breaking up the back term, and then using the foiling process while deciding what goes in here to make sure you've placed the numbers in the right position. So let's see, you could break up a 6 as a 6 times 1. That sounds good because 6 times 1 is 6, but 6 plus 1 is 7. When the last term is positive, both signs are the same. This is what they both are. So that does work by factoring. And then, of course, the solutions come from taking each factor. Now be careful, though, because a solution is not really a solution until you check it when you're solving um, radical equations. And then the other factor would give you this equation. So supposedly... By the time you bring the negative 1 to the right-hand side, perhaps x equal to 1 is a solution, and perhaps 6 is equal to a solution. You need to check these to make sure that they're not extraneous solutions, because sometimes both of them don't work. Sometimes just one of them works, and sometimes both of them are good answers. Okay, so let's see. If we were going to check, and check it in the original equation, because anything you did after that you could have made a mistake. So that's why you always want to check in the original. If you were checking out the number 1, it would be 1 plus 3 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 3 would be 5, and you're checking the number 1. So putting in the 1 here would get you a 5, but you'd have to put the 1 in over here also. So you'd have 5 is equal to 1, and I can write that out. 
If you're checking the um, answer of 1, you'd be putting a 1 in here for x. On both sides, you'd be putting a 1 where the x is. This would be square root of 4, which is 2. And then, of course, look at what you have here. 5 is not equal to 1. Therefore, we have just found out that this is not a solution. Now go check 6. If you were going to check 6, again, you would plug right into this original, the original equation. So you have 6 plus 3. You're putting a 6 where the x is plus this additional 3. 6 where the x is on the other side as well. This would give you square root of 9 plus 3. This one is going to work out because here you get 3 plus 3, which is 6, while having a 6 on the other side as well. So that one checks out. So it turns out that even though it appeared that you had two solutions, you really only have one. Make sure to check your solutions. Next problem. There's also a radical here. Again, you must isolate the radical expression before you go squaring to get rid of the square root. Therefore, this has nothing to do with the radical expression it, because it is not underneath it and therefore it needs to come to the other side. So just more practice for you with foiling. So this will be 2x minus 1, while this will be x minus 2. If all there is is a number on this side and a radical, then the problem is much easier and you will be able to do them in much less steps because then you'll just square this side, square that side, and you'll be off, you know, on your way to getting the answers. Again, always check the solutions. But when you have to foil on top of getting rid of a square root, those are the more challenging problems and thus warrant our, they warrant our attention. So here, now we're going to jump into getting rid of the square root. By squaring, that forces us to square here at what square um, on the right-hand side as well. When you square the square root, the square comes off and out comes the radicand. So we have 2x minus 1 here, while here we are foiling. Now again, you can do it the long way, x minus 2 times x minus 2, but you better realize that involves four different products, which you can draw the arrows, follow them, find the products. I'm going to reinforce square double square as the shortcut for foiling. So square, that means square this front term right here. Double, that means take this number, negative 2, and multiply it by x, but then double this number. Doubling means multiply by 2, so that would turn that into a 4. And then when you square again, that means you're squaring the back term. Negative 2 squared would be positive 4. Okay, now you're you got the foiling done on the right-hand side. Bring everything to one side so that you can decide how you're going to go about solving this. Positive 2x becomes negative 2x when it jumps to the other side, just as negative 1 becomes positive 1 when it jumps to the other side. It takes on the opposite sign. So then there's nothing on the left-hand side. You've brought this into general form by zeroing it out, while on the right-hand side there's x squared. These two combined is negative 6x. 4 and 1 combined is 5. And then you can decide, you know, this is pretty easy to factor. If it does factor, let's talk about it. We can break up the x squared, and then we can ask ourselves what times what, which is even easier than in the last example because there's only one way to break up a 5. So the signs, though, we do have to think about the signs, but you can only factor it as 5 times 1. And you can put the 5 in the front and the 1 in the back if you want to. Uh, again, when the last term's positive, both these signs will be the same, and this is what they'll both be, whatever is the sign is in front of the linear term, so they're both going to be negative. And you can check that real quick. x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 would be negative 5x, and then this would give us another negative 1x, which would, combined would give us negative 6x. And then this last term times this last term is 5. So if you're going to use that guess and check, make sure you're mentally checking it in the middle of the problem for placement and signs and give it one more check at the end. So we have this all factored and then the solutions are going to come from setting these factors equal to zero and solving it. And I know 
if there's simple factors like this, plenty of you just do that, that part in your head. But there are tons of steps to show for these problems. Okay, you're bringing one over here to get one of the solutions. And you know that the solutions are the opposite of the sign that they appear as when they're in factored form. And then this one would give you the answer x equal to 5. But now these are, these are just solutions that are supposed. You really don't know. You need to check. Are these really solutions? You don't know yet until you plug them back in. So the original equation was uh, 2x minus 1. I'll come over here and check them. So let's see, one of my answers supposedly is 1, so that would be 2 times 1 minus 1, plus that 2 that was right there is equal to, the answer that I'm checking is 1. Let's see if I get the same number on both sides. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 take away 1 would be a 1 underneath here, plus a 2. That does not look like this is an answer because look what you're getting. Square root of 1 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 is not equal to 1. So this is not an answer. Like I said, sometimes both of them work, sometimes neither of them work, and sometimes just one of them is the answer, which has been the case in the two examples I've given. The 5, let's see, uh, well actually I guess I'm saying that too soon because I don't even know if the 5 is going to work, so let's check it out possible that it doesn't work either. So let's see. My equation is 2 times the solution I'm checking minus 1. All of that's underneath the square root plus that additional 2 is equal to the answer that I'm trying to check. Okay, so let's see what we got here. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. Bring down the positive 2 and the 5. So this will be square root of um, 9 is 3, 3 plus 2. That one works out because we get the same number on both sides. So that works out. Answer is just the 5. Okay, two examples, but on a harder level than some of the ones that you're going to see, several of the ones you're going to see in my math lab. Isolate the radical, square both sides. There may be foiling involved as the examples that I gave and um, then check those solutions to see which ones actually work. Very important when solving radical equations. Next we come to some problems which don't appear to be radical equations, but they actually are. Because anything that has a fractional power, as you see in part A right here, actually can be written as a radical. So, we had learned in um, one of the previous problems that if you want to try and, and I don't know if this did come up, this may be the first time that these kind of problems come up in this chapter, but the idea of what's called a rational exponent is that you want to get rid of that fraction. I mean, that's the very first thing that you're going to want to do is get rid of that fractional exponent. And you're being told here that if you read this and understand this, that sometimes you're going to have two answers, both a positive and a negative answer. That has to do with even roots. How do you know that it's even? Well, they're telling you right here, look at this title. They're saying if the M value is even, that is the top of this fractional power. So when it's even, this is not, this is an odd number. Um, when it's even, you're going to have two answers, both the positive and the negative answer, because that means that the problem has to do with an even root when the numerator of the fractional power is even. When the top of the fractional power is odd, then you will only have one root because it's an odd type root. So if you recall, when we were taking square roots and we would take the square root of both sides, we would give the positive and the negative answer. That has to do with even roots. Okay, so this is a odd root. There's no plus or minus. There's just one root in the end of this. While this one is an even numerator. So there is going to be the plus or minus. A root is an answer. So here you'll have the, the, both the positive and the negative root reported as the answer. So I just want you to be aware of that as you're doing these problems. Okay, 
So first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of the fractional power. 